Hi all, in this video we are going to discuss about a helium neon laser. It was the first gas laser that was developed by Ali Jawan and his co-workers in Bell Telephone Laboratories in USA in 1961. It is a four level gas laser. In last videos we have seen about the three level laser system, four level laser system. So Helium neon laser is a four level laser system. Also we have seen the requirements and the components of laser. For the laser action to take place, first we want population inversion. To achieve the population inversion, we are using pumping method and also an active medium with the metastable state is required. Here, the pumping method we are using is electrical discharge method. For gas laces, electrical discharge is the better pumping method. So, in helium neon laser, we are using electrical discharge method for pumping. Also, an active medium with a metastable state is essential for laser action. Here, neon atoms are the active centers. Now, we can see the construction of helium neon laser. Helium neon laser consisting of a long narrow discharge tube of diameter about 1 cm and length about 80 cm. It is filled with helium and neon gas atoms in the ratio 10 is to 1. To get that 10 is to 1 ratio, helium is filled at a pressure of 1 mm of mercury and neon is filled at a pressure of 0.1 mm of mercury. To achieve the population inversion, pumping is required. Here we are using electrical discharge method. So, the ends of this long narrow discharge tube is connected to the electrode system. That is, you can see cathode and anode that are the discharge electrode. This narrow discharge tube is sealed at the end by a glass window that is known as Brewster's glass window. Brewster's glass window is an arrangement to get the polarized laser beam. The entire arrangement is placed between two mirrors in which one is 100% reflecting and the other one is partially reflecting. The active medium that is placed between two mirrors acts as an optical resonator. The last video we have seen the function of optical resonator that is providing the positive feedback to the system. Now we can see the working of helium neon laser. This is the energy level diagram of a helium neon laser system. Here F1, F2, F3 corresponds to helium energy levels. E1, E2, E3, E4, E5 and E6 corresponds to neon energy levels. The pumping method we are using here is electrical discharge method. So when the switch is on, a high voltage is applied across this gas mixture. As a result of this, the gas atom starts to ionize. That will provide faster moving electrons and ions. These electrons and ions are accelerated towards anode and cathode respectively. Then they are collided with the helium and the neon atoms and excite them to the higher energy state. Now among the helium and the neon atoms, helium atoms are lighter and more in number because they are in the ratio 10 is to 1. Neon atoms are heavier and less in number. So when these fast moving electrons collide with the gas atoms inside the discharge tube, the electrons can easily excite the helium atoms from the ground levels to the higher energy level F2 and F3 because helium atoms are lighter and more in number. These helium atoms in F2 and F3 have a long lifetime. Also, this F2 and F3 energy is almost the same as that of E4 and E6 energy of neon atoms. So, here, resonant transfer of energy takes place between helium atoms and neon atoms. What is the meaning of resonant transfer of energy? Here, the F2 and F3 helium atoms transfer its energy to the neon atoms by collision. 
how this resonant transfer of energy takes place between F3 and Ex and F2 and E4. Here, this F2 and F3 helium atoms will collide with the ground level neon atoms. That is the atoms in the energy level E1. When this F2 atoms collide with the neon atoms in the energy level E1, this E1 neon atoms will excite to the energy level E4 because the helium atom in the F2 level transfer its energy to the neon atom in the ground level E1 and thereby that will excite to the energy level E4. Similarly, the F3 helium atoms will collide with the ground level neon atoms then the neon atoms in the ground level will excite to the energy level E6. This transfer of energy is known as resonant transfer of energy. That is possible because this F3 and E6 energy levels are almost the same and F2 and E4 energy levels are same. So here the function of helium atoms is to help the neon atoms to pump to the higher energy levels. Here the active medium is neon atoms. As the neon atoms are heavier, that cannot pump efficiently to the higher energy levels directly. So using the helium atoms, we are facilitating the neon atoms to excite to the higher energy levels. That is by the resonant transfer of energy. That is by the collision of the helium atoms with the ground level neon atoms. That is by electrical discharge method, the gas atoms ionize, the electrons are produced, the electrons colliding with the ground level helium atoms, then they are exciting to the higher energy levels. The star indicates the excited state. This excited helium atoms colliding with the ground level neon atoms, thereby these neon atoms are exciting to the higher energy levels. When these neon atoms are exciting to the higher energy levels E4 and E6, simultaneously these helium atoms are coming to the ground level and they are again ready for the pumping scheme. Now the neon atoms are the energy levels E4 and E6. This E4 and E6 are metastable state. What is the importance of metastable state? In metastable state, atoms can retain for a long life of the order of 10 raised to minus 6 to 10 raised to minus 3 second. This will result in accumulation of neon atoms in the energy levels E4 and E6. That will lead to a population inversion between E6 and E5, E6 and E3, E4 and E3. The population inversion between E6 and E5, E6 and E3, E4 and E3 will result stimulated emission and thereby we will get laser radiation. This E5 and E3 are excited states. If the stimulated emission happens between a metastable state and a lower excited state, that laser system is four level system. Therefore, this helium neon gas laser is a four level gas laser. If the population inversion is achieved between a metastable state and ground level, that is three level laser system. Here the population inversion is achieved between a metastable state and another excited state. Therefore, it is a four level system. Now, we can see what are the laser radiations produced here. The population inversion between the neon energy levels E6 and E5 will result in stimulated emission and it will produce a laser beam of wavelength 3.39 micrometer that is in the infrared region. The population inversion between E6 and E3 
that result in new stimulated emission and will give a laser beam of 6328 Armstrong that is in the visible region that is the red laser beam. The E4 to E3 transition will give out a laser beam of wavelength 1.15 micrometer that is in the infrared region. So these are the laser radiations we are getting from helium neon laser. The predominant laser beam we are getting is E6 to E3 6328 Armstrong red color laser. That's why we are using helium neon gas laser in our laboratories for experiments. Now the neon atoms in the E3 level drop down to the level E2 spontaneously because E3 is an excited state. In an excited state, the lifetime of atom is very small of the order of 10 raised to minus 8 seconds. So E3 neon atoms spontaneously coming to the level E2. E2 is a metastable state. So it is very necessary to bring the E2 neon atoms readily to the level E1. Otherwise, if the atoms are accumulating at the level E2, that will affect the population inversion in the level E6 and E4. So one method to bring the E2 neon atoms to the level E1 is by collision with the walls of the discharge tube. That's why we are selecting a narrow discharge tube so that the neon atoms in the E2 levels can easily collide with the walls of the discharge tube and thereby they can be excited to the energy level E1. The output power of helium neon laser ranges from 1 milliwatt to 50 milliwatt. Even though this power is very low, its intensity is very high. So in educational laboratories and for research purposes, we are mainly using helium neon laser. The merits of helium neon laser beam is, it is a continuous red laser beam. The light from helium neon gas laser is highly monochromatic and directional. Usually the light from gas lasers are highly directional and monochromatic in comparison with the solid state lasers. Also, no special need for cooling arrangement is required here. So that's all about the construction and working of helium neon gas laser. It is a four level gas laser. Electrical discharge is used as the pumping method. Active medium is neon atom. It is giving laser output of 3.39 micrometer, 6328 Armstrong and 1.15.